G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video we're going to talk about the differences between oil and grease and how they're used in different applications. Right, so first off a definition. So grease is mainly defined as a solid or semi-solid lubricant formed as a dispersion of a thickening agent in a liquid lubricant. So if we were to look at sort of the compositional difference, um, oils or lubricants tend to be about roughly 90% base oil and 10% additive. Now that changes depending on obviously the kind of lubricant. So compressor oils, for example, are 99% base oil and they tend to only have a little bit of additive in them. Thermal oils are almost entirely base oil. Then you go over to something like the engine oils, right? They're, they tend to be highly additized in comparison. So, you know, these numbers are just a general guide. But then with greases, we've got base oil in a much lower proportion, so in the ballpark of about 70%. Then you've got the additives, which make up about 10% of the formulation. And what's different about them is that you've got about 20% of the volume is taken up by what is called the thickener. So if we were to answer the question, what's the difference between oil and grease? It's the thickener. All right, end of video. Nah, just kidding. Um, the reality is that there are plenty of other differences, so let's talk about some of those. The first being uh, leakage. Now, this is probably the obvious one, right? So if I had bearings and I pack them with grease, the thing about grease is because it's, as going back to our definition, it's a solid or semi-solid lubricant, it doesn't flow the same way that an oil does, so it tends to stay in place. So that's that's great. For applications where we really don't want leakage, um, this makes greases ideal. So you'll often find them heavily used in, as an example, the paper industry, right? So with, within the paper industry, uh, any kind of leakage of oil could damage the final product, right? So you imagine paper needs to be really white when it comes out. So any leakage of oil is gonna damage that final product and you're gonna be losing revenue. There are actually special uh, paper machine greases which are made, which are generally uh, dyed white. So even if there is somehow some leakage of grease, um, it won't damage the final product too badly. So that's probably the first and, and most obvious difference between a grease and an oil. All right, then we've also got contamination control. Now contamination control is very different for both an oil and a grease. So here there's a picture of a wheel hub. It's obviously packed with grease. One of the advantages of grease is that it can keep contaminants out, right? Whether it's washed down water, as an example, or uh, maybe it's, you know, dirt. So if you have a highly con uh, contaminated environment with maybe uh, steam or dust particles, grease is often a really good way of keeping that stuff out of the application. Now, the converse is also true, that unfortunately, once uh, contaminant gets into the application and gets into the grease, sometimes the grease actually holds it and retains it in the application. So once you have contamination, it's really difficult to get it out without an actual grease purge. Um, whereas an oil, with an oil, contamination control works very differently. If you have contaminants that are introduced into the system, the, the idea of the oil is that it will carry those contaminants in suspe suspension and carry them to the filters where they're removed. So from a contamination control perspective, oils and greases um, operate very differently. All right, now let's talk about the location of an application. So if we have a, a, a bearing and let's say it's just splash lubricated, right? So it sits in, a, in an oil bath. That's not a problem. Where we start to run into problems is what happens if the bearing is way up high in comparison with the oil reservoir? So when the, when the machine shuts down, all the oil tends to drain towards the low points, right? In this case, the reservoir is all the way down the bottom. And when we start up, it's going to take some amount of time, whether it's 10, 20, 30 seconds, for the lubricant to reach the bearing. So that's a period of time where uh, virtually the, the bearing is unprotected. We obviously don't have that problem with grease because it stays in place. So if you have a an application which might be uh, on a start-stop interval um, and the reservoir is very low, that could be 
a really good scenario in which you want to grease a bear bearing versus using a lubricant. External use. Um, what do I mean by this? So as an example with excavators, you know, greasing the bucket pins on an excavator. Um, if you were to use lubricant, it would just kind of fall onto the floor. It's not very tacky, so it doesn't tend to stick. Um, when we grease bucket pins, um, often we are able to use um, also uh, a, a solid additive, right? So molly is, is commonly used, um, which enables, uh, if let's say, for example, um, the excavator uh, were to go through a wash, right? There's wash down water that's sprayed at it and some of the grease is removed, there can still be some solid lubricant that's left, whether it's moly or, or, or graphite as an example. So often in external applications where it's where you're applying it either with a grease gun or it could even be wiped on, um, you really need to use a grease rather than an oil. Finally, we've got the fact that oil flows. This might seem uh, like a really obvious and basic thing to say, but what does that mean? So in an engine, one of the things that oil does is it carries heat away from the engine. So distribution of heat is a really important function of the lubricant, and grease can't do that. So in a high temperature scenario, uh, the grease can't go anywhere. Theoretically, that could mean that the base oil oxidizes faster, because our general rule of thumb is for every 10 degrees over, let's say, 120 degrees Celsius, then the oxidation rate doubles. Right, so if we're unable to carry that heat away, that could, in some scenarios, become a problem. The other thing about oil flowing means that um, you can have a much larger volume. Right, so there might, might only be, you know, 100 mils going to a bearing but you might have a reservoir of one or two liters. So at any one time, you know, only five to 10% of the, the total lubricant volume is actually doing work, right? So it, whereas with the grease, it obviously stays in the bearing or in the, in let's say the gearbox, um, and it continues to work 24 seven. Um, obviously there are some, you know, caveats to that because we do have uh, centralized grease systems which are continuously distributing grease, Right, so that's a little bit more similar to an oil system, but it's important to note that oil flows where grease does not. All right, that is a really, really quick um, description of oil versus grease and where you might use them. We'll get into grease thicketer technologies and grease manufacturing processes in later videos. But otherwise, um, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. This has been Lubrication Explained.